All right, guys, welcome back to Casual Card Games, and I'm going to come at you with my Mono White Darien King of Keldor deck profile. Um, this is a deck that I've recently made. I've been wanting to put it together for probably like a year, and I had a build finally put in order, and I finally got the cards for it, and I'm excited. I have play tested it against my buddies. Uh, it did stuff, it was going, it just, I got killed with a crackle of power on like turn seven where they were able to reduce and put like 34 into X, which I think is a BS rule. But anyway, that's for another time. Um, typical for my profile, uh, I'm only running basics. You can feel free to run whatever you want. I feel like because this is monocolored, basics is just fine anyway. Um, my land count in a monocolor deck, I normally go with 37. So I got 37 planes in here. Um, Darien King of Keldor, for anyone that doesn't know, 6 mana, 3-3 three, three human soldier. Whenever you're dealt damage, you create that many 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens. So a really cool effect. And I just wanted to make a go-wide strategy in white and also something that would incentivize me to want to gain life. That's kind of the other strategy in this is we make tokens, we make 1-1s, one, and we see what we can do with that. But on top of that, we're also trying to gain life because the more life we have, the more hits that we can take with Darien out there and make a bigger army. Excuse me. All right, so that's it for uh, that. I'll keep Darien like right there. All right, so let's get into the creatures. Um, so we got Soul's Attendant and Soul Warden. They're basically the same card, the Soul Sisters. Uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield, you gain one life. Pretty self-explanatory with that. We're gonna be gaining life of the amount of soldiers that we make and then anybody else that's making stuff. Distinguished Conjurer. Uh, this doesn't affect everybody else, it just affects you. Whenever another creature enters your board, you gain life. And then you can pay five mana, including a white, tapper, exile another target creature you control, and then bring it back, so basically flicker something. Um, we have a few creatures that we would want to flicker, and really I like the option of that I could use it to flicker if I have extra mana. But really, the fact that it's just gaining us more life, it's a solid card for just one more additional mana. Um, Alright, Sutra Priest. Uh, if another creature enters your battlefield, you gain a life. If a creature enters an opponent's battlefield, they lose a life. So, pretty good. Court Street Denizen. Uh, whenever another white creature enters the battlefield under your control, tap to a creature and opponent controls. This is a good way that if we're getting hit with damage and we're making soldiers, we can just tap down our opponent's stuff for our following combat to be good to go so we can get damage in on them. Uh, Starnheim Corsair, I am, like, this to me is just, I'm seeing this more and more in my decks of like, yeah, this is just a good card. If you run a decent amount of artifacts and you run a decent amount of enchantments, Starnheim Corsair does what, um, Vidalkin, I think it's Vidalkin Archmage, um, it's the two mana one that says reduce your artifact spells by one, and then the, uh, Starfield Mystic, reduce your enchantments by one. This is both of those on one card, just for one more mana, and it's a 2-2 two -two with flying. Um, but yeah, really good card. I think it's better than a common, personally. Healer of the Pride, not sorry to throw that. Healer of the Pride, if another creature is about for your control, uh, you gain two life. I think this is amazing in this deck. So, um, Keeper of the Accord, a great new white card. Uh, I say new, I mean it's been out since 2020, but it's a really solid card. At the beginning of each opponent's end step, if the player controls more creatures than you, create a 1-1 white soldier creature token. At the beginning of each opponent's end step, if they have more lands than you, you grab a, a basic planes from your deck and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Um, really good card, a uh, great way to let us ramp and then occasionally, you know, make more soldiers if we, uh, if we can do that. Locks it on Gatekeeper, this is just a great white card. 2-3 uh, elephant soldier for 4 mana, artifacts, creatures, and lands. Your opponent's control come into play tapped. Great card. Um, Myrel Shield of Argive, or Argive, I don't know how you say that, I'm assuming Argive. Uh, three, four legendary human soldier for four mana. During your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. Whenever she attacks, create X, one, one color soldier artifact creature tokens where X is the number of soldiers you control. So we like that because this gives us more soldiers, also stops people from messing around with our stuff on our turn. Um, I wish they were white soldiers. But that only affects like one or two cards in this deck. But uh, she's she's a great card for that value. Um, Phyrexian Vindicator. I threw this in here because it's just four white pips. And the value of a 5-5 five, five flyer for four in this deck. And then it has another effect. If damage would be dealt to Phyrexian Vindicator, prevent that damage. When damage is prevented this way, Phyrexian Vindicator deals that much damage to any other target. So if... You know, if someone wants to attack us, we can block with Vindicator, and if it's enough to survive it, well, actually, 
if damage would be de dealt to it, prevent that damage. So it seems like, it, yeah, it's just going to be a hard creature to get rid of. I haven't actually been able to use this in a deck yet. Like I said, I've only used this deck once, wasn't able to get this card out. But the fact that it really can't take damage and they could just dish out the damage that it takes, really good card. Um, Catapult Master, here's some of our soldier tribal stuff. For five mana, it's a 3-3. Three, three. Tap five untapped soldiers you control, exile turret creature. I like that. And in this deck, we should be able to get good use out of that. Crested Sun Mare, other horses you control have been destructible. At the beginning of each end step, if you gain life this turn, make a 5-5 five, five white horse creature token. Shouldn't be too hard for us to start making a horse army as well. Um, a cavalry, if I should say. Defiler of Faith, um, I think you should run the Defilers. If you're running a monocolor deck, whatever the Defiler is for that color, you probably should give it a shot. Uh, so 5-5 five, five for 5 mana, Vigilance. So that's good stat just right there. As an additional cost to cast white permanent spells, you may pay two life. Those spells cost uh, one white less to cast if you paid life this way. This effect, this effect reduces only the amount of white mana uh, that you pay. So for instance, that Phyrexian Vindicator we just showed. So instead of me tapping four uh, planes to play that card, I could just pay eight life instead. So really good. When you cast a white permanent spell, also you make a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. You can tell we love soldiers. Uh, Knight Captain of Eos. For five mana, it's a 2-2. Two, two. I love this card in here. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you make two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens. And then you can pay a white, sack a soldier, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. One of the ways that we could save ourselves if we're getting too low on health. Too low on life, I should say. Sarah Redeemer. I didn't put this in here until the other day, and I am i don't know why it took me so long to be like, yeah, this would be perfect here. It's also a soldier, which is just a little extra bonus. But for five mana, a 2-4 flyer. If another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control... Uh, put two plus one plus one counters on that creature. That is great in this deck. Uh, Shattered Angel. So a 3-3 three, three Flying Angel. Whenever a land enters the battle from your control, you may gain three life. Under an opponent's control, I should say. So just another way for us to just rack up life gain. Captain of the Watch. This is one of the creatures we would want to flicker. Uh, for six mana, it's a 3-3 three, three with Vigilance. Other soldiers you control get plus one plus one have Vigilance. Whenever Captain of the Watch enters the battlefield, you put three 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield. Really good effect. Uh, Requiem Angel. If a creature that's not a spirit, a weak control dies, you make a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. For six mana, 5-5 five, five Flying Angel herself. Really good in this deck. Sun Titan. It's white. We got to run a Sun Titan in here just because it's a great white card. 6-6 uh, six, six, Vigilance. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, you can grab a permanent with CMC 3 or less from your graveyard put it onto the battlefield. Elish Norn, once again, just even if this was not a token deck, a go wide deck, I'd still probably throw an Elish Norn in a mono white deck just because. But 4-7 uh, with Vigilance for 7 mana. Other creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2. Creatures your opponents control get minus 2, minus 2. Great in this deck, obviously. Amiria Shepherd, one of my favorite white cards. Might be my favorite white card. 4-4 um, four, four Flying, Landfall. Basically, disregard the first part. The second part is what we're going to talk about. If a land enters the battlefield and it's a plains, which all of our lands are going to be plains, uh, you can grab a non-land permanent from your graveyard and put it on the battlefield. Uh, the normal effect says if it's not a plains, you can put it into your hand. But basically, any non-land permanent that's in our graveyard, as long as this is out, every land that we play, we're just going to be able to bring it back to the battlefield. It's a great card. Um, Celestial Force, at the beginning of each upkeep, you gain three life. This is eight mana, seven, seven. This can get out of control fast, especially if, a way, if we have a way of doubling the amount of life that we gain. Like, there's a few cards that we can do that with, so that could be six life every upkeep. That gets out of control fast, like I said. Um, and then the last creature is Moonshaker Cavalry. So eight mana. This is the white Crater Hoof Behemoth, basically. Uh, except instead of giving everything trample, it just gives it flying. But it's a six six for eight mana, flying. If it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain flying, get plus X plus X till in turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. It's perfect in this deck. All right, that is it for the creatures. Let's move on to the enchantments. I got a Johnny's Welcome. If a creature enters the battlefield you control, you gain one life. So basically, it's the equivalent to uh, Sutra Priest or something like that, in the sense of it's gaining you life when your creatures enter. It's only one white, so it's great. Uh, Honor of the Pure, really cool card that, like I said, you don't get to use this in a lot of decks. So that's what I like about building monocolor decks, stuff like that, is it narrows your card pool, your selection, so you have to use cards that you wouldn't normally use. And I think that's the exciting part of Commander, is when you get to play cards that are off the beaten path that hardly ever see play. White creatures you control get plus one, plus one. It's better than just, you know, there's a few cards out there that'll say, pick a creature type, and then all those creatures get plus one, plus one. This means that any of our creatures 
that we make in this deck, aside from those colorless soldier tokens that I told you with my rel, aside from those, Honor of the Pure, I think, boosts everything in this deck. Intangible Virtue, creatures you control, a uh, creature tokens you control get plus one, plus one, have Vigilance, which is another cool anthem. Anointed Procession, I only have one copy, it's in this deck. Um, I wish Wizards of the Coast would reprint this card because it's like at $57 right now, but if we would create one or more tokens under our control, we create twice that many of those tokens instead. Obviously great with our deck. Uh, Armored Ascension, Enchant Creature, gets plus one, plus one for each planes you control and has flying. I think the flying alone is worth at least one mana, so that means, you know, with the amount of planes that we could get, if you could make a creature go like plus eight, plus nine, plus ten, something like that, I think that's worth like three mana, so uh, yeah, like that card. Feldar Retreat, one of the best white enchantments that they've made in recent years. Landfall, if a lander is about from your control, choose one. Uh, you can either make a 2-2 white cat beast creature token or put a plus one plus one on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance until on turn. More than likely, we're gonna make we're gonna do plus one plus one counters on all our creatures since we're making an army. Test of endurance. I'm happy they reprinted this card in the last you know six months, whatever it was. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 50 or more life, you win the game. Uh, that shouldn't be too hard in this deck. Worship, one of my favorites. Uh, if you control a creature, damage that would reduce your life total to less than one reduces it to one instead. So basically, if we can keep a creature out on the board and they want to keep hitting us uh, at a certain point, we just can't go below one. So uh, we can still lose life if they have a way to have us lose life. Angelic Chorus, if a creature is about for your control, you gain life equal to its toughness. Now, most of the stuff that's in our deck, you know, it's just going to be one per because we're making a lot of one ones. But, you know, there's obviously we have more creatures in here than that, so we could gain more life that way. Uh, this card, I like Angelic Chorus. I just, this deck may not be the best fit for it, so this is a card that I'd be willing to take out if I saw another card. I guess I could always put a Swords to Plowshare as a Path to Exile. They're not in here. Maybe they should be, but that I mean, there's a chance I may switch that around in the next week or two and put those cards in here and maybe take Angelic Chorus out. But anyway, yeah, that's it for that. Boon Reflection, if I would gain life, gain twice that much life instead. That's great in this deck with the amount of ways we have to gain life. Cather's Crusade, one of the best white cards. Uh... Excuse me, whenever a creature is about for your control, put a plus one plus one to each creature you control. Amazing in this deck. Divine Visitation, another amazing card in this deck. If one or more creature tokens will be created under control, you make that many 4 4 white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance instead. So basically, if someone hits us while we have Darien out, and let's say we were to make four 1 1 white soldiers, we instead make four 4 4 flying vigilance angels. And the last enchantment is Righteous Cause. Whenever a creature attacks, you gain one life. That's anybody's creatures, so that's even more life gain for us. All right, artifacts, let's get to it. Pearl Medallion, white spells cost one less to cast. You guys know I love the medallion, so of course it's going to be in here. Um, a, way, a, a card I found that could give us damage and then could, uh, damage our opponents, but we want, there's a few cards in the game that you can possibly damage yourself, and not many decks really want to do that, but in this deck, if we get Darien out, if we can do a few more extra damage to us to make some more soldiers, that, that's worth it. Um, this card says, whenever a spell or ability causes a player to shuffle his or her library, Psychogenic Probe deals two damage to him or her. Obviously, if our opponent's doing some ramping, or if they're constantly searching out their deck for something, whatever it is, uh, cracking some, you know, fetch lands, whatever it is, Psychogenic Probe will deal damage to them, but we have a few ways to search our deck, which, like I said, could be the difference maker if we can make just a few more tokens. So, I like that card for two mana. Archeomancer's Map. This is the latest edition. I had this sitting around and I, I think I kept trying to put it in an artifact deck and then I took apart that artifact deck and I was like, hey, this would be perfect in here. Uh, for three mana, when it enters the battlefield, search your library for up to two basic planes, shuffle them, put them into your hand, then, uh, and then, like I said, shuffle. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under opponent's control, if that player has more lands than you, you can drop a land from your hand on the battlefield. So we're in mono white. Good chance that we're eventually gonna get out ramped by the green players and, and possibly, you know, I don't know, red player, blue player, whatever. So Archeomancer's Map is a good way for us to kind of catch up, and I like that. So, uh, good card. Let's see. Blasting Station. This might be the best card in the deck in the 99, honestly. So, for three mana, you could tap it, sack a creature. Blasting Station deals one damage to charge creature or player. Whenever a creature comes into play, you may untap Blasting Station. So, I said there's a few ways we can damage ourselves. This is the main one. Um, so, hypothetically, if we have a soldier out, let's say, and we have Darien, and we have Blasting Station out, we tap... Sack the token, deal damage to ourself. With Darien's effect, we make another soldier. Soldier comes into play, we untap Blast Sensation. We could hypothetically do this. I mean, you, you could do it a lot as long as you had enough um, to go. 
I mean, hypothetically, you want to have some sort of payoff with all that. Um, so, like I said, you, you don't want to just keep sacking a token to make one token and then damaging yourself each time. You want some other payoff that's happening. Um, but Blasting Station is really good. Uh, Mace of the Valiant, really cool card. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each other uh, for each charge counter on it, and it has vigilance. If a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you put a charge counter on Mace of the Valiant. It's got a three mana uh, casting cost and a three mana equip cost. So I know that sounds steep, but the fact of this is an equipment that you know, aside from someone destroying or exiling it, even if the creature that it's equipped to goes away, the equipment will hang around. And the fact of you know, we just we're going to put out a lot of tokens, a lot of creatures. And this should just keep stacking charge counters on it. I really like that. Um, we got Oketris Monument, another way to reduce our creature cost. White creature spells cost one less to cast, and whenever we cast one, we make a 1-1 white warrior creature token with Vigilance. Uh, like I said, just another way to reduce the cost of Darien and other things like that. Staff of the Sun Magus. Uh, I like the staffs. I think they're really cool in a monocolor deck. And even if you might think, oh, well, how much life are you really going to gain off that? Look, every land I drop is going to gain me life, and every card I cast is going to gain me life, aside from the artifacts. So, yeah, I just think it's cool, and, and, and I just want to run it. I, just, I mean, personal flavor, for personal tech, I guess. But, yeah, um, especially in this deck, because we do want to gain life. Symmetry Matrix. Whenever a creature with power equal to its toughness enters the battlefield control, you may pay one if you do draw a card. It's like a Mentor of the Meek, but for mostly everything. That's what I like about it. Uh, Eldrazi Monument. I've been always wanting to put this in a deck, I just could never find the right one. I think I found the right one. Five mana. Creature creatures you control get plus one, plus one, have flying and indestructible. At the beginning of your upkeep, sack a creature if you can't sack Eldrazi Monument. The good thing is, in this deck, we should always have a creature to sacrifice with Darien uh, making tokens. Cage Sun. I was compl I had seen this card before. I was completely unaware of it. So you guys can make fun of me if you want. But um, when it enters the battlefield, choose a color. It is six mana to play. So in this case, we're going to choose white. Creatures, uh, the chosen color get plus one, plus one, which is basically everything in the stack. And it, whenever a land's ability adds one or more of that chosen color to your mana pool, you add one additional. So basically, this is also letting us tap for double mana, which is awesome. And then Eternity Vessel. Uh, cool tech that I think uh, is really awesome, but six mana, when it enters the battlefield, you put X charge counters on it where X is your life total. So let's say, let's say we're at 30. We got 30 life. Uh, and then whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, you may have your life total become the number of charge counters on an eternity vessel. So let's say a, a round goes by and people have hit us, and let's say we're down to like 18. Well, on my next turn, I could drop a land. Hey, I'm back at 30. And like, hey, all the damage that I took, you guys aren't making any uh, progress. So... I really think that's a cool artifact. All right, let's go on to the sorceries. We got Lay Down Arms, uh, a newish card, I guess that came out a little over a year ago. Uh, for one white mana, exile target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of planes you control, its controller gains three life. So we're gonna have a lot of planes, so that should be easy. Gift of Estates, if an opponent controls more lands than you, search your library for up to three planes, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle. So once again, if someone has more lands than us, we just go grab three planes and like, all right, we're set up with our lands for the next couple of turns, so we're good to go. Citywide Bust, destroy all creatures with toughness four or greater. If we got Darien out and a token army, we should be good on this. I mean, I'm not going to say we don't have any creatures toughness four or greater, but we should be able to play this and get rid of some problematic stuff. Secret Rendezvous, I think this is probably, <coughs> excuse me, it's probably the best white draw card that I can think of um, because there's not that many. For three mana, you and target opponent each draw three cards. So what I love about this is the first thing is you are getting to draw three cards for three mana. So that's solid value right there. You're, you're one mana per card. That's good. Uh, the next is you also get to make an alliance or, and make someone an ally. So a lot of times you might pick the person that's in last. I think it's probably the smartest thing to do is help them out. It, it, it makes you look like, like you're not going to make a lot of enemies at the table if you help out the guy that's in last place. Maybe you're in last place. You're playing mono white. You might be in last place, but you could help out the next guy, make a friend, and be like, all right, we're, we're going to help each other out. And you never know. That could save your butt later on. Or you could be scummy and pick the person that's in the lead and go, hey, I'll help you out even more as long as you give me another go round, another turn, and don't kill me. Uh, but Secret Rendezvous, I think, is just a really cool card. I'm happy they made that a few years back in Strixhaven. Uh, Ravnica at War, Exile all multicolored permanents. Doesn't affect us. We don't have any. Planar Cleansing, destroy all non-land permanents. I think just to, you know, it says it in the name, Planar Cleansing. If you just need to wipe the board and be like, we need to start fresh, uh, great card in white. 
Deploy to the front, one of the reasons I wanted to make the deck. Uh, for seven mana, put X 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens on the battlefield where X is the number of creatures already on the battlefield. With our deck, this could be a crazy number. I mean, hypothetically, I mean, just on average, I could, I could have like 25 creatures on board, play this for seven mana, put 20. And like I said, that's not including your opponents. Let's add another 10, let's say. It's not crazy to think that I could be putting 35 soldiers onto the board for seven mana, which I think is pretty good. Um, Devout Invocation, uh, another great card in here. Seven mana, tap any number of untapped creatures you control. Put a 4-4 four, four white angel token uh, onto the battlefield for each creature tapped this way. Once again, I, I think the last game I got to turn six and I already had like 14 uh, soldier tokens. So once again, this wouldn't be too crazy to think on turn seven I could have tapped four soldiers. And we do have a few ways to give them vigilance as well. But four, uh, 14 soldiers and make 14 4-4 four, four white angels, that's pretty cool. Uh, mass Calcify, destroy all non-white creatures. As we stated, I think the only creatures that we make that are not white are those Myrel soldier uh, tokens that are colorless, but I'm not really too concerned about affecting those and killing those. Stormherd, last sorcery for 10 mana, create X11 white, so uh, white Pegasus creature tokens with flying, where X is your life total. As you guys have seen many times over, we are trying to gain a lot of life, so that could get uh, pretty crazy. Uh, then the last four cards are instants. I got Brave the Elements. I actually did play this the other night, and it came in clutch. Uh, one of the guys, I had a board of creatures, and uh, you know some other people did too. And he w played Blasphemous Act, and I was I had one mana up, and I was like, sweet, I'm actually able to get use out of this. So I played it, chose red, uh, white creatures you control gain protection from the chosen color until end of turn. So. Yeah, it saved my butt. I ended up losing anyway, but it saved my butt at that moment. Uh, Abolish, just a cool card in white. Uh, so it's three mana, but you can kind of disregard that. You may discard a planes rather than pay Abolish's mana cost and then destroy target artifact or enchantment. So, like I said, we should be able to have plenty of those since we run 37 in the deck. Uh, Congregate, target player gains two life for each creature on the battlefield. We should be gaining a ton off that. And then the last card in the deck is Entrapment Maneuver for four mana. Target player sacks an attacking creature. You create X-1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens where X is that creature's toughness. Ideally, you would want to do this against someone that had really big stuff or someone was playing, you know, a Voltron deck. But uh, in my playgroup, there's not really anybody that has a Voltron strategy. Uh, my buddy Jesse loves Planeswalkers and doesn't even like doing anything with combat, which is kind of lame, but that's his thing. Uh, his brother plays with this. He is still new to Magic, so he hasn't... I'm sure he'll get around to he'll make a Voltron deck, but he's still learning. Um, my buddy Johnson, he... I don't know if he has a Voltron... I don't think he has a Voltron deck yet, but I'm sure he's not opposed to doing it. And then Brendan, that's just generally not his play style. He generally likes to go wide or do other things, and, you know, it's where we clash. But anyway, that is it for the deck profile for Darian, King of Keldor. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm really excited to get to use this deck again. Might be a few weeks, though, because I'm making a lot more decks. I think I'll have five new deck profiles for you guys here coming up soon. I think within the next week or two. So that's it for now. Have a good one, guys.